It is only when Melia's annual fair is over that these kids come looking for a ride. It's a yearly ritual for migrant children to stop the folded Ferris wheel and bumper cars for a spot to hide, to ride along across the sea to mainland Europe. For those packing up, the night's tougher job is trying to keep those kids away. Can you show me? Yeah. Maybe, you know, yeah, yeah. this kind yeah. of... Yeah, yeah. My God. You know what's the in Zima? The stand is for Nendo. They hide there. But they are determined to follow others to France, Germany, and beyond. And in this city, every truck, every car and ferry is a chance to leave this life in limbo behind. The continent is Africa, but on its edge is a sliver of Spain since the 15th century. Morocco is there, just a fence away. A statue to Franco, the dictator, still stands here. So does Melia's old reputation as a coveted gateway to Europe. Migration has long been central to Melia's story. You can see it on the streets. Now, as the migrant route shifts to Spain, many are again counting on Melia to have Europe's back. As a frontier town, Melia has long been witness to exceptional misery. A caravan of needs that drive endless movement across its border. At this crossing, the poorest of Morocco's women, many of them widows and single moms, can work as portiadoras, mule women, to earn a few euros for each back-breaking package of duty-free goods they carry to merchants back in Morocco. Many of them do this every single day. As a Spanish enclave, Melia's borders are protected by Spanish National Police and the Civil Guard, who gave us access and a guide, Jose Luis Roman. There's a lot of migratory pressure, he says, and it's not just overland, as you can see at this fence, but there's also migratory pressure over the sea as well. A key part of their job is keeping people out. And key to that is a triple fence that contains Fortress Europe and keeps Africa out. It starts and ends at the sea. This version, 20 years and millions in Spanish and EU money in the making. Six meters high and designed to make it hard to scale. Those hooks up there tell of someone who tried. So this is Morocco. Marruecos. Moroccan forces, also helped by EU dollars, act like a retaining wall. The fence is monitored 24-7. Motion sensors, infrared cameras, all make it possible to respond to an alarm within a minute. All of it has brought the numbers down over the years. But with word spreading that Spain is the best route into Europe now, the numbers are slowly creeping up, and people still try the fence daily. People like Osama from Yemen, who tried twice before he made it over. There's no other way, he says. I was told the easiest way was over the fence to jump. A few years ago, Melia saw more than a few mass jumps. The last this year was in January. In the only other Spanish enclave, Ceuta, down the coast, smugglers were blamed when hundreds stormed and jumped the fence this summer. A feat they celebrated. Human rights advocates have called out Spain for deporting some asylum seekers without considering their claims. 
critics include Dunya Mansouri from the local opposition. The Spanish police can now just throw the illegals back over the fence, she says. Those people are not helped or cared for properly. And if they can't get over the fence, people have gone through it or around it, smuggled by sea or by car. Just a day before our visit, they found a 15-year-old in a car, wrapped in a blanket, hidden behind the seats. We've seen cases in the most unbelievable places, he says, like dashboards, inside spare tires, under the seats, even inside the fuel tank. So many still make it in that the main temporary shelter is at many times its capacity. No place for families, they say, never mind infants. You meet all kinds passing the time outside. Some are smuggled in on rafts, like Alucin Diallo, who escaped a harsh life in Guinea. You might have to take some risks sometimes, because it is very difficult back there. And the Aqabi brothers from Yemen, once a breakdancing act on Arab Idol, now refugees. We deal with the uh, smuggler. They used to catch us in the uh, Moroccan gate, Moroccan soldiers. So they used to catch us and beat us. And we tried like nine times or 10 times. So we got in. Just describe what the situation is like inside. I just sleep two minutes, then I wake up. I get scared. The next day, they were given passage to mainland Spain, where they plan to stay. Others wait within striking distance, just a fence away from the good life, and a big step short of their European dreams. There are some services that help them navigate the limbo, like Save the Children's Spanish classes. And though there is a shelter for minors, dozens end up on the streets, some on glue or drugs, and in a constant cat and mouse game with police as they wait for a perilous journey they aptly describe as making risky. Risky is something like a dream, because if you reach to make risky, it means that you will arrive to the peninsula, to the mainland, to the Spain. And it means to stay during very long period, hours, in some cases, days, without food and without uh, any kind of beverage, and it's very dangerous. As the fair moves on, part of the ritual is to invite the media to the port for Operación Feriente, a chance to show Guardia Civil efforts at protecting Europe's southern border by hunting for stowaways with sniffer dogs, even a heartbeat monitor. The police have to be as creative in searching as the kids are in hiding. It's the dog that gives the first signal that someone is hiding. Then it's a matter of finding them. and persuading them to come out. One way or another. In the back of this one truck, they found eight teenagers. This teenager, like many others, like many in Melilla itself, is from Morocco. Their hopes of an escape to make a life in Spain or beyond crushed. Probably not for the first time or the last. The others watch, waiting their turn. Some inevitably do make it, riding aspirations even walls fail to contain. Nala Ayed, CBC News, Melilla, Spain.